Hello, this is Mr. Nolan, and uh, I'm going to give you a really quick talk about photosynthesis, biosynthesis, and respiration in plants. Uh, plants do all these things, and we want to be able to understand how they're sort of related in a plant. What 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 is really keeping this plant alive? So uh, for our goals for this video are to be able to uh, model the process of photosynthesis and biosynthesis and respiration in plant cells. So we're zooming into the cells, uh, and then we're going to zoom out and kind of think about the whole plant. So let's first think about photosynthesis. So what we'll do is we'll really quickly model um, what these chemical changes look like, and then we'll sort of look at things on a more macroscopic scale and think about what does this look like in terms of the tissues of the plant, um, and then we'll think about where are these things going on. So to start off, let's just kind of review um, what is happening, what chemical changes do we see in something like photosynthesis. So in photosynthesis, the plant is going to take in water. It's also going to take in carbon dioxide. And we're going to produce some glucose as well as oxygen as a byproduct. Now, if we were to balance these out, we would end up with six O2s, six H2Os, and then we'd also have six CO2s. Um, but uh, the important thing is to recognize that our, that our plant is taking in water and carbon dioxide and it's producing sugar and oxygen. Uh, and photosynthesis is, is being driven by light energy, and what we end up with is it goes from light energy to chemical energy, or food energy, in our sugar. So this is the thing that plants are doing, uh, as long as the sun is shining, plants are going to be doing photosynthesis all the time. So that's just really quickly to review what we see when we are looking at photosynthesis, what chemical changes are we seeing. If we look at respiration, plants actually do this too. Um, every living cell in the universe respires pretty much all the time. And so what we're going to look at here, just again to review, uh, what does respiration look like? Well, a respiration is exactly the opposite as photosynthesis. So we start with uh, typically sugar, C6H12O6. You can get energy from other molecules, but sugar is really the basis of most energy uh, in, uh, in living things. We've got our six O2s, and we're going to produce six waters as byproducts that the cells release and get rid of, and then also six carbon dioxides, and the cells get rid of that as well. So this is something that we associate with animals, but plants are doing this as well. Um, don't, don't forget that. Plants are also doing this as well. We start out with our chemical energy over here, and that chemical energy that the, cell, that the plant has locked away into sugar it do, it's not going to lock it away into the sugar for nothing. It's going to eventually eat that sugar because that's food. And it's going to uh, convert that into other kinds of energy, such as heat, um, possibly kinetic, right? So there are other kinds of energy that this plant is going to um, convert that, that sugar energy into, which it ultimately captured from the sun. Plants do this as well. And so we're going to talk about uh, kind of where and, and uh, when and why. Um, and they also do biosynthesis. So if you don't recall, biosynthesis is when we take something like a bunch of little amino acids and we, we lump them together to make a larger molecule, such as a protein. So these amino acids on the left side, these are called monomers. Mono means one. And over here we're going to produce polymers. Right? Poly means many or several. So this is the basic idea behind biosynthesis. Um, and also water is a waste product. We can kind of see over here that water is going to be produced from, from uh, those reactions. There's another video that I put up that, that goes into more detail with those. But what biosynthesis looks like in terms of our chemical change, um, what we have is our, is our monomers, uh, such as glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids. which, by the way, the cell produces um, through photosynthesis and other reactions going on in the plant. And so we go from something like glucose to something like starch. We go from amino acids to proteins. We go from fatty acids to fats. So these over here are our monomers. And over here, these are our polymers. Just a really quick reminder of, of what these chemical changes look like. We're building larger molecules here. There is energy involved. I'm not going to talk about how energy is involved. Um, it's really chemical energy all the way. 
Uh, but the important thing to remember for biosynthesis is that cells need to do biosynthesis in order to grow. Biosynthesis builds larger molecules from smaller molecules. And so any part of any organism that's growing must be using biosynthesis in order to grow, in order to pack on some mass. So let's think about what would this look like if we were going to try to model this in our plan. So let's take, you know, start with photosynthesis. Um, our leaf cell is going to draw up water from another part of the plant. And that part of the plant, typically, that we're going to draw that up from is going to be the roots. So the roots are actually going to be drawing up water from the ground. And that water is going to go into our cell along with carbon dioxide from the air. So our CO2 is also coming in from the air. So these two substances, carbon dioxide from the air and water from the, water, uh, water from the ground, meet in this cell. Meanwhile, we are blasting this, this plant with sunlight, light energy, and that energy allows a really incredible transformation. We are able to produce sugars, C6H12O6, that stay inside that cell. They are either consumed or they undergo biosynthesis later. Um, and we're also left with uh, oxygen as a waste product. The oxygen uh, leaves that cell and so we have oxygen on our way out of our plant as well. So this is the idea behind photosynthesis, if we were to imagine, okay, this is going on in our leaves. But remember, photosynthesis is not the only thing happening in our plant. If you look, let's say, look, let's look underground. If you've got a root cell, um, that cell is under the dirt, it's under the soil, so it can't get any light. There's no way that that root cell is doing photosynthesis. So what the heck is it doing? Well, that root cell has to do things to carry on the life of that plant. The root cell supports the life of the plant. So what that root cell does, in addition to pumping water up from the ground, it's actually uh, doing things such as biosynthesis um, or respiration. So let's kind of take biosynthesis. That root cell is going to take sugars, which are being pumped down from the leaves. So our plant is also... The plant is also put, uh, sending sugars down into other parts of the plant. And so those sugars show up, let's say, in these root cells. Um, we have you know, monomers such as uh, glucose. Those are coming in from elsewhere in the plant. And what we end up with are things like starches. If this were, let's say, a potato plant, those starches would actually be stored in the potatoes. Most people know that potatoes are starchy, uh, and, and that's where those starches come from. They actually really came from sugars, glucose. And then as a byproduct, we're also producing some water. And this is a little confusing to people sometimes because they think, well, don't plants suck in water? Don't they absorb water? Well, yes, but if water is a byproduct of biosynthesis, some cells must be just producing it and getting rid of it. In the case of root cells of plants, they really don't use water. Um, what they do is they produce it as, as a waste product, both from respiration and from something like biosynthesis. So that's just an example of maybe what a root cell might be doing. Let's say it's doing biosynthesis. Let's jump over to a cell that I've chosen arbitrarily. Let's just say a stem cell. This is not the same kind of stem cell you hear about in the news. I'm just saying a, a, a cell from the stem of a plant. Uh, and uh, you know maybe the cell is, is doing some respiration because we ought to know that every cell that's living in the universe must be doing respiration. So in order for respiration to occur in the stem cell, the plant is, with from those sugars it's producing, it's going to pump some of those sugars into um, our other parts of the plant, such as the stem. So we have sugar, like glucose, coming in. And we also, don't forget, we also have oxygen, which is coming in from the air. So not only is oxygen on its way out of the plant, we also have oxygen on its way into the plant in order to support respiration. This cell is going to produce carbon dioxide as a waste product, and it's also going to produce water as a waste product. And meanwhile, it's, it's taking that chemical energy from the glucose and it is, is using that. So, whoa, what the heck is going on? We've got our plant that's doing photosynthesis and respiration, and meanwhile, it's doing all this biosynthesis at the same time. So this can be kind of overwhelming. 
So we've got photosynthesis here, we've got biosynthesis here, and then over here, meanwhile, we've got respiration at the same time. Plants do all these things, um, but they don't do them in all their cells all the time. For instance, photosynthesis only happens above ground. It can only happen when you have light. Um, but biosynthesis occurs in any cells that grow, which are any cells in the plant. And respiration over here also occurs in any cell that's alive. So kind of overwhelming, right? There's lots of things that plants are doing. We don't want to simplify them by saying, oh, they photosynthesize. They really do lots of things. They do respiration. They do biosynthesis as well. Which I think might lead us to a natural question. Well, wait a minute. If they're photosynthesizing and respiring at the same time, why do they even produce anything? I mean, if they're, if they're producing sugars and oxygens just to absorb those sugars and oxygens to produce carbon dioxide and water, how do they even produce anything? Um, well, the answer is very subtle. You have, kind of have to think about this, this question that I have um, down here. Um, which process occurs in plants more? Is it respiration or photosynthesis? Well, if it were respiration, the plant would run out of sugars because respiration, you take sugar and oxygen to get energy out of that sugar. If it were respiration that were occurring faster, you would run out of sugars. And what that means is that photosynthesis and respiration are happening. However, the photosynthesis is what's happening faster. We have more photosynthesis going on, so ultimately the net result is that you produce sugar and oxygen. Even though the, sh the plant is also absorbing sugar and oxygen to respire and use, not to mention create uh, things like uh, starches, um, it is actually photosynthesizing at a faster rate than it is respiring. So ultimately, our, our byproducts are going to be um, sugar and oxygen, and then our, our uh, net uh, inputs are going to be uh, water and carbon dioxide. So let's just kind of, to wrap this up, let's just kind of think of where are these things going on in the plant. Up here in the leaves, we've got photosynthesis. Right? They definitely are not happening down below in the roots. But we also have respiration going on. And by the way, we've got respiration going on down here. Both in locations A and B. Finally, we have biosynthesis happening up here in the leaves and down here. So probably the easiest way to think about this is not where do all these things happen, but basically where does photosynthesis not happen? And that's underground. So everything, you know, the respiration and biosynthesis, if the cell is alive and if the cell is growing, then it's got to do both of those processes. However, photosynthesis only occurs in parts of the plant that are exposed to the sun where they have chloroplasts, green parts of the plant. So I'm hoping that this is perhaps enlightening. Um, and so you kind of get a sense, you know, for the fact that plants are not a one-show pony. They don't do one thing. They don't just photosynthesize. They do respiration, they do biosynthesis, and photosynthesis. Um, they're, they're really incredible organisms. Chemically, plants can do a whole lot more than animals can. Animals have to go get their food. Plants can produce their food. And, by the way, they eat it and produce um, more uh, of themselves while they're at it. They can take that glucose and they can make uh, things like starches out of it and cellulose, and they can actually grow uh, as, as an organism, pretty much from scratch. The only extra input they need is nitrogen, which we didn't talk about in this video, but they also need nitrogen to help produce those proteins. So like I said, I hope this was helpful, um, and uh, you, know, you can look forward to more screencasts from me in the future.